BTEC Applied Science Unit 3 Skills, one of my skills videos. variable and the risk analysis so what is a hypothesis consider this our scientist if the molecules of the fuel more carbon atoms then the amount of energy released per gram of fuel will be bigger that's a hypothesis it's actually a very common experiment you need to know is how does the amount of fuel released per gram vary with the number of carbon atoms in the molecules of the fuel. So a hypothesis. A hypothesis is basically a prediction that can be tested in an experiment. So you make a prediction and then you test your prediction in an experiment. It could be based on observations or some form of uh, scientific theory. In your hypothesis, you should say what you're going to change, uh, the type of fuel, fuels with different numbers of carbon atoms, and what you are going to measure or what you're going to calculate from your measurements, the amount of energy released per gram of fuel. I mean, what you'd actually measure is a temperature rise, but from that you would calculate the energy. a null hypothesis when you predict that something will make no difference to something else consider this how long it takes a kettle to boil will depend on several things one of them will be how much water you put in it you are going to investigate this write a suitable hypothesis what would your prediction be based on observations well this is a very simple one when we put more water in the kettle, then the time it takes to boil will increase. It'll take longer to boil. And that's a simple hypothesis. We could get a bit cleverer. The time it takes to boil will be proportional to the amount of water we put in it. In other words, if we put twice as much water in, it will take twice as long to boil. And then to be very clever, the kettle transfers electrical energy into heat energy uh, a larger volume of water will need more heat energy to get to the same temperature so it will take longer to boil. So we're actually justifying our hypothesis with a bit of scientific theory there. In any investigation, uh, we're looking at the effect of one thing changing one thing on something else and we're looking for the relationship between them. Okay, with what's the relationship between that and that? Now, other things might have an effect on it, and so what we do is we keep them the same so that they don't affect our results. There are three types of variable. Independent variables. The independent variable is the thing that we change. The dependent variable is the thing that we measure. It's what we're interested in because the dependent variable is going to depend on the independent variable. And then the things that we keep the same, the things that we're not interested in, they are our control variables. So independent, dependent, and control are the three types of variable. Different kinds of data may be involved, and we can categorize it. It may be numeric, in other words, involve numbers, or it may be categorical, doesn't involve numbers. Numeric data can be continuous or discrete. If it's continuous, it can take any value. For example, your height. You might be 1.73 meters, or you might be 1.89 meters tall. Discrete can only have certain values. For example, whole numbers. How many brothers and sisters have you got? Well, you've got two or three or four. You know, you can't have 3.6 brothers and sisters. It can only have certain values. It's discrete. 
Categorical, there's two types of categorical data. It can be nominal or ordinal. Uh, nominal, different categories. There's no numbers involved. Nationality, you're French or you're German or you're Spanish. No particular order. Ordinal ones, you can put them in order. Small, medium, large, you can put them in order. But basically, numeric and categorical. The type of data involved will affect what kind of graph we're going to present our data. Do we do a bar chart? If we do a bar chart, are the bars in any particular order? Uh, if it's numeric, then we'll probably do a, um, a, a point scatter graph. Okay, we won't do a bar graph, we'll do a line graph. Consider this, a student is investigating how a deficiency of a particular ion might affect the growth of a plant. They set up several plants to grow in different solutions as shown below. And you'll see that one of them has got lots of full nutrients. One of them doesn't have any, it's just distilled water. And then other ones are lacking certain nutrients. There is a deficiency. So what is our independent variable? What is our dependent variable? What are our control variables? Have a think maybe, pause the video and write down your ideas. Our independent variable is the missing ion. Okay, we're investigating deficiencies. So which ion is missing from the, the growth solution? The dependent variable, there's lots of different things you could measure. If you wanted to know the rate of growth, how quickly it's growing, then you'd certainly measure time. Time would be involved. For example, the gain in mass after four weeks. There's other things you could measure. You could look at the growth of the roots, the color of the leaves, the size of the roots. There's lots of different dependent variables you could look at. Control variables, things that you keep the same, the type of plant, the initial size of the plant, the temperature, the amount of light, Okay, these are things you could investigate in another experiment. Your results, you're not necessarily plotting a graph. Your results could just be a description of what happened. The, the color of the leaves, a general comment on how well it's grown, if it looks as though it's healthy or not, a description of what's happened. Bio Ninja, by the way very very good biology website here's another one for you to have a think about if you put marble chips in hydrochloric acid calcium carbonate in hydrochloric acid a reaction takes place a student wants to investigate how the concentration of the acid in affects the rate of reaction uh, she decides to use a balance to monitor the reaction so she's measuring the mass What's our independent variable, our dependent variable, control variables? So again, pause the video, scribble down some ideas. Our independent variable is the concentration of the acid. Dependent variables, uh, again, we're interested in the rate, so time has to be involved. What you could do is time how long it takes, the, or the time it takes for the mass of the reactants to fall by five grams, or you could measure the change in mass after a minute. If you divide the change in mass, because the mass is gonna go down by a certain time, that will tell you, it'll give you an indication of the rate of the reaction. Control variables, what will you keep the same? The volume of the acid, the initial mass of the marble, the size of the marble chips, because surface area will be important, the starting temperature. Which of these do you think would give a clearer answer to the original question? Uh, so you've got the change in mass in one minute against the concentration of the acid on the first graph. Uh, and then the second graph, the time for the mass to fall by five grams against the concentration of the acid. I mean, either graph would be acceptable. I think the first graph gives a, a clearer picture of what's going on. 
risk analysis okay we should always consider what risks are involved and that way people are less likely to get hurt identify any hazards say what the consequences would be say how you're going to avoid them okay in your plan you'll be expected to do a kind of risk analysis in your plan you say health and safety acids are dangerous corrosive substances a spillage would be dangerous as they could cause harm, particularly to the eyes. So I'm going to wear a lab coat and eye protectors. The acid will be kept in a clearly labelled bottle, bottle in the centre of the table. Uh, I'll inform a technician immediately if anything is spilled. Okay, health and safety. There's always a risk of burns and scalding when heating things with a Bunsen burner. I will put the Bunsen burner on a yellow flame or turn it off when it's not being used. Any burn should be run under a cold tap for at least five minutes. These are risk analyses.